Good evening, YouTube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video, even though it's not been 24 hours. I feel like making a video. Just, you know, it's kind of like I said in my previous videos. I look at my videos as part of my online diary. Crooked Fingers. I mean, my my booktube or youtube videos about books about what i'm reading about my reading life is just part of my diary a part of my my life i don't look at it i'm, I'm not a, a critical kind of person i don't give in-depth book reviews i tell you what i like and what i don't like and uh, as i have described myself i am primarily a book collector I like collecting books. I like being surrounded with books. As you can see, I'm sitting in our or in my main study, which is full of books. You can see up there and books here and CDs and books and CDs. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm really into music. I probably have a couple thousand CDs. I've been collecting CDs for for almost 28 years. And then before that, I was in cassettes. And before that, I used to burn music off the radio. I used to tape stuff off the radio when we lived in Houston, Texas, back in the, the 80s. It's like I told you, I mean, I have a... I keep here in my study desk a timeline of my life and so I know where I was at. It says here uh, we in 1991 left Houston, Texas and moved to Holland, Michigan. So we've been here since 1991. So, I don't know how many years that is. I mean, nine, 20, uh, 28 years? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, when I was in Houston, I did my internship. Uh, I graduated from Reformed Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi in 1986. We left Houston in 1991. I got a job unloading egg trucks in 1993. I stopped working in 2007, June the 21st. And today is May the 9th, 2019. I'm on page 413 in, in my 2019 diary. So yeah, life goes by. It's like I always say, I was, I'm always aware of time. My beginning and my end. My beginning and my middle and my end. And uh, like I said, I, I told my wife today, I, all these memories of the past can keep breaking upon my consciousness because I think it's because we're going to have our 40th wedding anniversary on May the 19th and I think about what my life was like when I left California back in... When did I leave California? Get my timeline out. Let me see here. Left Richmond Rescue Mission in 1976 where I was, on, I was a volunteer. Left Richmond, California to finish college in Grand Rapids, Michigan at Reformed Bible College in 1978. In 1979, May 19th, Carol and I got married. I was 27 years old. <laughs> and now I'm going to be 67 years old. So that's going on 40 years of marital bliss. <laughs> yeah, when I was in California before I left to go to Bible College, I was really... Well, I knew I had to change my life. That's why I left California. I knew I wasn't going anywhere. And at that time, back in 1997, I thought, well, I needed to finish college. I wanted to go to a reform college, a Calvinistic college. 
I knew that Grand Rapids, Michigan was a center of Calvinism, Dutch Calvinism, because I had, um, I just had known that through the Banner of Truth magazine and listening to Christian radio. I knew about Grand Rapids and being a center of uh, historical Calvinism, covenantal, classical covenantal reform theology and all of that. And so, but now I'm in a different place in 2019. I'm not like I was back in those days. I mean, I still have an appreciation for the 17th century, 17th century English Puritans, but I like reading, like I've been reading this, this afternoon, Memoirs of a Revolutionary by Victor Serge. This is translated out of French by Peter Sidwick and George Piaz. I've been listening on my portable CD player, the new uh, Dead to a Dying World uh, Elegy. I really like this CD. And this morning I read... For devotions, I read some of Promise, Righteous by Promise, A Biblical Theology of Circumcision by Carl Dennick. And I read some more of the Reformation Commentary in Romans 1 through 8. I finally finished uh, the commentary on chapter 1. verses 16 and 17 and now I am on Romans 1 chapter 1 18 through 32 which reads for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteous righteousness suppress the truth for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worship and serve the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind and to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval of those who practice them. So that's where I'm at in Romans, the epistle Romans, in chapter 1, verses 18, 32, God's response to humanity's sin. So I start reading that this morning. And then after that, like I said, I read uh, Righteous by Promise, A Biblical Theology of Circumcision by Carl Derrick. And then I've been reading the Memoirs of a Revolutionary by Victor Serge. 
I did go this morning. I did visit a local thrift store just down the street. I hadn't visited this week and this is what I found. Oh, I forgot. I also was reading this afternoon My Friends by Emmanuel Bove. This is translated from the French by Janet Luth. I'm really liking this. It's only 150 pages. I've read 59 pages in this. But I found this at a thrift store today down the street. War on the Run, the epic story of Robert Rogers and the Conquest of America's First Frontier by John F. Ross. This is on, from what I can gather, the French and Indian War in early American history. As you all know, I'm a student of American history. <clears throat> I see myself as an American. I'm not a nationalist, but I do have a, a love for American history. And so I found that. And then I found this, The Day of the Locust, a novel by Daniel West. I really like this. It was only like uh, 90 cents. It's in perfect condition. It's just... It looks like it's even been read. It said it was published in 1939, but I don't think so. Because it says here, uh, BOMC offers recordings and compact discs, cassettes, and records. Now, in 1939, they didn't have recordings, compact discs, cassettes, or records. But it says here, copyright 1939, by Random House. First printing. So what I think this is, is a first printing by Random House. But it's in perfect condition. It looks like it has never been read. Now, I don't know exactly when it was published. But I see I had this edition. I got the library reject at the library where I, the, the library used bookstore where I go. It's called Henrik District Public Library. I had Miss, Miss Lonely Hearts in the Day of the Locust, in the, uh, this is in the Modern Library of the World's Best Books edition. But now I have, this just looks like it's brand new, doesn't it? I wish I knew when this was published. I don't know. But anyway, he wrote the, so now I have this, I found, and then I found this book. I collect books on the history of New York City in New York. This is called American Passage, The History of Ellis Island by Vincent J. Cantio. I like reading about New York City and the history of New York City. I never have visited New York City. And then I collect uh, Stephen J. Gould. I've shown you my J Stephen J. Gould who writes Natural History. And this is the one I didn't have, which I was really surprised. It's called Wonderful Life, the Burgess Scale, Shale, and the Nature of History by J. Stephen Gould. These are like, he's a, a natural history. Uh, I don't have this one. I was really surprised. This is the one in library thing that's, uh, is number one as far as how many people have this one. And I don't know why this one, maybe it's one of the first ones that he published. This came out in 1989. And yeah. He's an evolutionist, and I'm not. I'm a creationist. I don't believe in evolution, but I go by the Genesis account and Genesis 1 about Genesis 1 through 3 about creation of the world, Earth, and Adam and Eve, and things like that. And then I picked up this book. From my Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln presidential collection, Lincoln and the Power of the Press, The War for Public Opinion by Harold Halsert. I already have a book by him already in our library. I had this one by him, Har Arnold Hal Halsert, Lincoln President Elect, Abraham Lincoln and the Great Succession Winner, Winner, like the season winner. 1860 to 1861. So now I have two of his. He's a Lincoln, a Lincoln scholar, and 
he won a he won a prize. He was a second runner-up for the Lincoln Prize for his book Lincoln at Cooper Union, which I don't have. So I found those at, at thrift, a, thrift, a thrift store down the street. So yeah. It just amazes me how this looks like brand new. I wonder when it was published. I like the cover. This looks absolutely brand new. I couldn't believe it. Only 90 cents. So. So, yeah. So I'm writing in my diary, reading re memoirs of a revolutionary writing in my diary. My wife is in the in the living room watching news. I'm back here writing in my diary, reading, listening to music, drinking some wine. It is, like I said, it is a Thursday night. It is going on 8 o'clock. Well, exactly. It is 7.37 according to the clock. See up there? See? Deaf to the world. <laughs> So tomorrow's a Friday. Tomorrow I volunteer at the library bookstore, the book nook. Maybe I'll find some good stuff to bring home. Maybe not. So yeah, so I hope you're having a good week. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. People come and go. I wish when people would decide to leave my booktube channel that they would leave a comment why <laughs> i know sometimes i would i would subscribe to a channel and then i would unsubscribe after i've watched some videos and say well you know that's not my cup of tea that's not where i'm at or i don't i'm not really interested in the, the that person's literary taste so i don't know probably all kinds of reasons but I'm just here to uh, to be real, share my love for books, talk about writing in my diary, talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, talk about all kinds of things. So I sign off and hoping you're having a good week, a good reading week. And until next time, bye.